For a lot of people who want to become a senior developer, it might be interesting what I would do differently if I want to become a senior again. And just for you to know, I already work as a web developer more than 15 years. So by the end of this video, I will show you some shortcuts that can help you to get to a senior level faster and avoid spending your time on unnecessary things. First of all, you must stop to chase frameworks and libraries. And it is extremely difficult to do, especially in JavaScript ecosystem, because we are getting new libraries every single day. And you for sure open YouTube and see videos about this cool new framework or library, which you for sure need and which will change web forever. You should not believe this stuff, it is just hype. All these libraries and frameworks will be dead much sooner than you even get to learn them. The stack inside web was not changed like 5 or 10 years. For example, on frontend most popular frameworks are React, then Angular, on the backend they are different, but mostly you have either Node with JavaScript or things like Java, PHP, Python or other stuff. It is much better to focus on basics, learn your language on a really good level and your main framework with which you are working. Don't follow the hype, it doesn't make any sense. Another thing that you must start doing is learn how to think as a senior. Most developers that I see are simply closing the tickets and they think that they are doing fine. They don't think about business as a whole, they don't even think if it is the right way to implement the feature or if business needs this feature at all. They simply do their job and they are going home. This is totally fine, but this is not a mentality of the senior. You first need to clarify with your product owner or the business if this is exactly what business needs. You want to solve tasks in the most simple way and really often when non-tech people are planning some tasks, they might overlook much simpler solutions. So looking from the business perspective and seeing the broader picture is a must for senior developer. Another important skill is to practice writing boring, predictable code. A lot of developers, when they try to become seniors, learn a lot of different patterns, try different architecture, and their code really often becomes mess. It doesn't really mean that patterns are bad, but when I see some skilled developer who is writing a factory around a factory around a factory and then use six more patterns inside, this is not healthy. You need to write your code like you are writing it for the junior who will support it. You want this code to be predictable, easy to read, follow and scale. And by the way, if you want to simplify your journey to senior developer, I prepared for you a free PDF with the checklist and the 30 days plan which can help you transition to a senior level. Your goal as a developer is to have a healthy code base. Writing tricky code or single liners is not a way to go. Another important point is saying I don't know with confidence. What does it mean? A lot of devs think that they don't know enough and they never want to say I don't know something because then they think that the whole team will think that they are not senior enough. This is a completely wrong approach. For developer it is completely normal to not know something. But you should not just say I don't know, you need to add that you need time to investigate it. For example, if you don't know how to make a specific feature, or you are not sure if it is possible at all, you can simply say, ok, I need half of a day to evaluate this ticket and after this I can give you an answer. So saying I don't know is totally fine, because everybody understands that you can't know everything, but you can learn if it is needed. Another point is documenting decisions. Most developers hate writing documentation, they really like writing their code. But here is the thing, if you stop working on a project for half of a year and then you return to it, even for you it will be difficult to continue without asking questions, because a lot of which cases can be tricky to understand and sometimes you won't understand why code is written at all without a comment. This is why it makes a lot of sense to cover with comments tricky parts of the code and additionally document decisions and architecture that you implemented in the project. It won't help only you, but the whole team or any other people who will be hired or need to jump to your project. 
And you might think here, okay, I don't really care, I am on vacation or I am sick, somebody will fix that. But just imagine another developer needs to jump to a project and what he will say to the product owner or team lead, that the project is documented and it was easy to fix the bug, or that the project is a mess where he can't understand anything. Asking more questions in the product meetings. This is an extremely important skill. Again, a lot of developers don't want to show that they didn't understand something. Or they think that they understand, but they didn't think about the whole picture or exactly what business needs. This is exactly questions that you want to ask your product owner and discuss before you start implementation. Even during the implementation is totally fine, because the sooner you find out problems, the sooner you can do fixes or change the way how you implement things. So communication is a key here. It is not wise to simply understand somehow the requirements, jump to the feature, implement the whole feature, and then see, first of all, it is not what the project needed, and secondly, it is completely useless to the business. Additionally, you must always track what you accomplished. A lot of developers have problems that they don't track what they know or what they learned, and they simply think that they don't progress. And then it is really difficult to feel like a senior if you don't see your progress. This is why it makes a lot of sense to track your progress for several reasons. First of all, you can do it for yourself. You can see what you learned, what features you closed, what you implemented in the project, and how many new things you know now. But additionally, this list is extremely important for your yearly review. Typically in companies, once a year, we are discussing salary or progress of specific developer with the team lead or a product owner. The main point is when you are coming to this meeting with a list of things that you learned and you brag about yourself, it makes a lot of sense because then the chance that you will get higher salary is much bigger. If you simply come to the meeting and on the question how did you progress, you can't really show anything and you don't really remember what you did, it just doesn't make sense. Another one is about finding a mentor. You can progress 10 times faster when you have somebody to review your code, to show best practices and to share the better architecture with you. If you have somebody, for example, in your job, or you can find somebody to mentor you, you can progress much faster. I paired with developers and they progressed to a senior level during several months instead of years. And they got really solid architectural and senior skills. And the last point to sum everything up here, think about impact, not about output. It is not about how many features you closed, it is about what you did for the business where you are working. It can be better tooling, better documentation, better processes, better performance. But all these things can have a great impact. And don't forget, if you need some help or guidance how to transition to a senior level, you can find a free PDF with checklist and 30 days plan in the description under the video.